Hey, welcome back to my channel, Duct Tape Mechanic. In this video, I'm going to show you how I, how I built this metal shed. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel, Duct Tape Mechanic, for more DIY and tapering videos. Since I already have a larger shed in my backyard, I just needed something to put the common lawn tools in. So I picked up this shed. This is an Aero storage product, 8 by 6 foot shed, model number NP8667, and it typically runs about uh, 280 bucks at Home Depot. This model doesn't include a floor, so I had to make my own. So I had to buy um, eight pressure treated 2x4s and two um, 23 by 32 pieces of plywood. The framing for the floor is relatively simple. Um, it's just uh, an eight by six and a half foot frame with uh, three studs in the middle. Um, I kept the floor half, about a half a foot greater than the base of the shed because I wanted a space to lay down um, some, uh, some of my garden tools like uh, shovels and rakes and stuff in, behind the shed. After deciding the final location of the shed, I leveled the ground with the help of my nephew. After that, I got a little too trigger happy with my impact gun and began sheeting the floor with the plywood, but uh, I quickly realized I forgot to put the cinder blocks underneath the floor, so I had to lift the whole thing up and put uh, cinder blocks underneath it. Um, so I recommend doing putting the blocks before you start adding the plywood. The cinder blocks will keep the floor out of the mud. After adding the cinder blocks, I finished up the floor. And as you can tell, when it comes to making sure things are leveled, the duct tape mechanic just doesn't mess around. All right, let's get this build started. Um, just a little disc disclaimer before we begin is that if you expect this uh, build to be like IKEA furniture where you could just assemble it with a single hex key, um, you can be in for a little bit of a surprise. Even though it's not overly complicated, there is a lot of components and maybe some 200 or 250 screws and bolts that are required to assemble this whole thing together. In the first part of the build, the instructions call for the assembly of the roof beams, wall frames, and door tracks. Um, a tip to make sure that the door tracks are assembled correctly is to make sure that they measure 94 and 5 eighths of an inch um, after they've been assembled. After you've assembled the roof beam, the wall frame, the door tracks, go ahead and set them aside. And then assemble the floor frame at the location that you'd like to build a shed. However, don't anchor the floor frame down to the floor yet because the flexibility will be needed later in the build. In the next step, attach the wall corners to the floor frame. Um, in this step, you'll need assistance from someone, otherwise you'll bend the sheet metal. So I had my brother help me out. After attaching the corners to the floor, go ahead and attach the wall framing to the corners. In the next step, attach all the wall panels to the wall framing and the floor framing. This is a time consuming process with a lot of screws and washers. So take your time and work your way around the shed. In the instructions, it states that a drill is helpful for this build. However, at, after, during the step, you'll quickly realize that it's a essential requirement. This is what it should look like so far. In the next step, I install the door jams on both sides of 
the door opening. After this, I installed the wall channels. My wife had to help me for this part, but she didn't want to be in the video, so I'll just show you how they're supposed to look. Next, I assembled the roof gables and attached them to each end of the shed. In the next step, I attached the three roof beams to the shed. Um, make sure to use the enclosed weather tape between the gable joints and the roof beams while doing the step. Now it's time to install the roof. For me, this was probably the toughest part of the build because the roof um, panels would bend or deform under any sort of weight, so you have to be really careful. Anyways, start off by installing just the edge panels. After installing the four roof edge panels, this is how the build should look at this point. After that, go ahead and install the four large roof panels. Um, to get the holes to line up for everything on the panels, may, you may have to pull and pry on the on the panels themselves and the frame of the shed, but uh, that's why we didn't anchor it in at the start. Then install the ridge cap down the middle of the roof. Then go ahead and install a roof trim on both sides of the roof. After the ridge cap and the two roof trims have been installed and what seems like a thousand screws later, this is what the roof of the shed should look like. After that, I installed the door handles and sliding mechanisms to both doors and bolted them to the shed. And unlike the demo they had set up at Home Depot, the doors closed and opened really smoothly. In the last step, I anchored the shed to the floor studs by using 2 inch screws. This is what the final product looks like. The only thing that was left was to put everything into the shed. Overall, I'd rate the difficulty of the build as an intermediate because if you haven't built a shed before, it'll probably take about two days to complete. As far as the quality of the material, I would give it a six out of 10 because I really felt that the uh, sheet metal on the roof could be could have been a little bit more sturdier and thicker for the affordability of the shed i give it an 8 out of 10 because where else can you find a shed for under 300 bucks throw in another 100 bucks for the floor and uh, it's hard to beat overall i give this a 7 out of 10 score and it is a product i would recommend because it's affordable it's reasonably easy to assemble, and most importantly, it does its job. I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, remember to subscribe for more content.